Wow. Here we are again, a Friday afternoon of Green Rush, the business of cannabis talk show. Hi, everybody. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media and sometime host of this program. You know, this is the third holiday show we've done over the last three years, around the same time every year, the middle of December. Everybody is already looking around, making sure they have all their lights up and their trees in their, in their various places in their house and all my uh, fellow Jewish friends have their uh, menorahs out and their candles, which, by the way, you never, ever get them until like the night before. Um, that's human. That's just human nature. Uh, this Friday, we are going to talk about the past and the future. That's right. The past, of course, was 2022. And I don't know what kind of a year you folks had, but I can't wait to get rid of this year and get on to next year. <laughs> Okay, 2023 has to be better than 2022. That in mind, we are now introducing a new poll. So for the next couple of weeks, we're not doing any official, real, new, uh, original programming production. It's all going to be the best of pro cannabis media uh, live streamed on our Roku channel, our Apple channel and our website. So uh, we certainly welcome you to check that out. And of course, everything's on demand on our YouTube channel as well. That being said, we are doing a poll on the top five news stories of 2022. And there were so many. Last year, I think we only had 10. And I saw about 15, maybe even 20. And we narrowed it down to 15. And now we're asking everybody to go online. I'm pretty sure it's info at Pro Cannabis Media. Or you just go to the YouTube channel, because I'm sure right now, Dan is pushing the public button, if he can, on that one video that I uploaded about an hour ago that has all the links to our poll in it. I'm pretty sure our newsletter is going out sometime this afternoon if it hasn't already. All that being said, we are welcomed once again on the third Friday of every month by Morgan Fox from Normal. And wait, no, wait a second, Morgan. I know it's the holidays and I know you're you're a great dad, as is the others on this particular screen. Where Where did she go? Oh, she's laying down right now. Uh, that's okay. the quietest that she could hopefully be. But uh, y'all might see her eventually when she starts getting rowdy. All right. Fair enough. Doug Miller and Josh Kincaid are with us again uh, for the duration of the program. I put out about 50 invites, people. So I have absolutely no idea who's going to show up after 430 up until six o'clock. And then, of course, at six o'clock, we'll run our last We Talk News of this year as we head forward and look forward to 2023. All right, so Morgan, the, the, the biggest question uh, on our minds today, as you look at what's going on in Washington, D.C., um, is the fact that this poor safe banking bill has been tagged along, it's been talked about, it's been pushed aside. Is it dead for 2022 right now? Well, before I get into that, I just want to uh, apologize to your viewers in advance in case I have to dip out early because uh, my uh, uh, one-year-old is sick and is uh, really dragging my attention quite a bit. Uh, her mother is uh, super busy with work stuff as well. So uh, if I have to uh, dip out before the conversation is over, I apologize. But anyway, um, so the, the short answer is no. Uh, we are not done yet. Um, the conversations around what could be included in the omnibus are still ongoing, and there is still the possibility of a standalone bill. Um, but every day that passes makes me less optimistic. And uh, honestly, I, I have to say that this represents like a huge failure in Democratic leadership for not using the power that they have had for the past year to actually push an incremental package forward and waiting until the last uh, half of the year after CAOA was introduced to actually get something on the table and start having conversations about this. And, you know, also, uh, I think a lot of uh, the, uh, the weight rests on advocates, too, um, for not being willing to engage with the GOP. Uh, not being willing to uh, figure out exactly what was a measure too far, not being willing to get enough people on board to pressure McConnell to uh, allow cannabis policy reform to go through in any of the spending bills. Uh, you know, the, 
bottom line is that uh, Mitch McConnell is really, really good at his job and he's able to whip his party into shape. And if he thinks that something is uh, out of line with, uh, uh, you know, what his ideals are, or he thinks that there's something that he can use to damage Democrats, he's going to use it. And he used it again, just like he used it in 2020. Uh, but he doesn't need to have that power. Uh, this is something that is uh, universally supported across party lines, obviously more supported uh, in some parties than others, but there's majority support in both parties for significant cannabis policy reform. And the fact that uh, this has now become a uh, like a trading issue really just means that McConnell has Schumer over the barrel head on this. So uh, Schumer is going to need to give up a lot outside of cannabis in order to get cannabis included in the omnibus. Uh, that being said, we still have the opportunity for a standalone bill, but the days are numbered. I mean, it is literally days. Right. We totally get that. Um, certainly more optimistic than a lot of people in this industry. All we hear now is about doom and gloom for 2023. And that's a great segue into Josh Kincaid, who has spent <laughs> some time looking at uh, those numbers that support the doom and gloom. Uh, <laughs> so, Josh, welcome to the holiday show of Green Rush. Uh, go ahead. Uh, you can uh, introduce. And, of course, Doug, uh, you, anybody can chime in when we uh, go through your figures. I'm pretty sure uh, Mr. Dan French has some of them ready to rock that uh, I think he does anyway. But yeah, no, you're probably familiar with what you predicted. Go ahead. Yeah, no, actually, this this isn't my predictions. This is something I've been aggregating for like the last four years or whatever. Uh, so what I do is I go and I grab about a dozen different uh, cannabis publications that have predictions. And I, um, well, actually, here, let me just show you. How about that? Yeah. Uh, now this, you, now have, you now have control of the show. Go. <laughs> So basically, there's there's twelve different um, cannabis publications here, and so I categorize them based on their predictions for the for the following year, aggregate them all, and then kind of put them into a list. So in 2019, their 2020 predictions, for example, were that price for some of the publicly traded companies were going to be really important, and profit, of course, was going to start to become uh, a lot more important. And then, you know, one fifth of the people thought something around around regulations or legalization was going to pop. And then uh, separate from that, I pulled out cannabis lounges, which never happened. Uh, vape gate kind of, fin you know, fizzled away. Cannabinoids, new, new cannabinoids were the, were the thing back when the um, THCA, I think was, or is that right? Is that when that was discovered? Um, THCO was out. THCP. That was when TCP is when uh, when that came out. CBD was another one, and then medical educations and concerns. So not a whole lot. And then um, running through 2021, very similar stuff, except some of the concerns came in, some of the consolidation, uh, you know, too many companies, whatever, they were going to fold and consolidate. CBD still on there, cannabinoids. Remember the demand from uh, COVID and how high the demand was? That sure fell off. Price and profit for, went from number one to number six. I think you know people saw cookies expanding internationally, and they're like, "Oh, that's going to be a new thing," uh, and hasn't really, you know, been a thing yet. People thought investment would surge, and it hasn't. Putting those kind of side by side and seeing, you know, kind of how things have shifted o over the time, I think what we'll see is that in you know 2019, people didn't really know, um, and then people will start to have more and more opinions uh, as the years kind of move on, and it'll get more uh, more categorized. In 2022, uh, their predictions for this year were we're going to see a lot more uh, legalization, new product innovations, which I don't think came true. Uh, I was at MJ BizCon, didn't see a whole lot of new canna uh, cannabis product innovations. Cannabinoids and terpenes are still on the list. I think consolidation and MAs did happen. Saw Tilray and Hexo; those were huge brands and branding. I think is still part of you know some of that cookies and um, you know less about. Uh, highest THC and uh, lowest price point more towards people finding out what brands they want, investing price and profit still there. Um, consumption lounges are important, but there's an interesting thing in that there's so many opinions that I had to put in a random or miscellaneous category. Um, 
you know, people think banking and small business are going to be more important than MSOs. I think that's too early, but these are the industry predictions, if you will, and kind of see over time, they've gotten more, you know, uh, categorized and more opinionated, um, not necessarily accurate. We're still waiting for consumption lounges, small business. I think it was way too early. Banking is too early, not enough product innovations, but as time moves on, I think, you know, next year, uh, you'll see very similar categories this year in just different orders. Hey, Morgan, uh, if you're still with us and not uh, changing a diaper, uh, can you, what's your first reaction uh, to some of these? And uh, I, I don't see anything here that's really um, earth shattering, newsworthy, if you will, because, uh, you know, those percentages did go down. And, and more importantly, there's more categories now. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the state of things right now, I feel like nobody really knows exactly what is going to happen, and any predictions have to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, what I do know is that it is going to be extremely difficult to get any sort of cannabis policy reform through uh, various committee heads in the 118th Congress, uh, including and uh, especially Jim Jordan. Um, but that being said, I think that we have a lot of opportunities to move uh, like small incremental stuff uh, through these uh, these committees and potentially through to full legislation. Um, but I think that this is really an opportunity for us to be able to uh, dive into bipartisanship. Uh, you know, for the last couple of years, we've had uh, a, a a relatively receptive house and a, uh, a Senate that was at least like half receptive. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're going to be in a position where we're dealing with much, a much more difficult uh, uh, political environment. And so um, I think that uh, it's going to be incumbent upon uh, uh, advocates and the industry to uh, really reach across the aisle and determine what we can get past um you know i think incrementalism is now going to be the name of the game because uh you know full descheduling i think is completely off the table for the next two years um and the challenge is going to be trying to get federal legislation that we think is going to be uh beneficial to the most pe uh, most people possible passed um so you know I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next year uh i think a lot of uh people that have been working on the uh on the hill are going to have to uh kind of rethink exactly what their strategies are as well as oh hey dude yes uh, <laughs> start yes. to work with people that uh that they wouldn't necessarily have worked with before <laughs> are those the Democrats crying? Is that what they're doing? Is they're throwing their voice into your daughter there or what? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't exist. work with those Republicans. But, <laughs> you know, we're seeing a lot more Republican support in the House. Um, you know, the Senate is still really up for grabs, but uh, uh, but there's a lot more, uh, you know, diehard prohibitionists in the Senate that maintain positions of power than there are in uh, the House. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of freshmen that we can uh, help to influence right now. Uh, we are going to have to be dealing with a, a whole bunch of new committee heads in the House that we're going to need to develop relationships with if we want to actually pass legislation um, or even to get hearings on it. Uh, but those options are within the realm of possibility. You know, it's not completely shut out. Uh, Republicans are steadily realizing that this is an issue that their constituency supports. Uh, they're realizing that there are going to be political consequences if they act in an obstructionist manner or they ignore this issue. So it's really incumbent upon voters that they uh, they want this issue to be prioritized. Absolutely. And you are a superstar, Morgan. If you need to go and take care of your daughter, we certainly understand. Uh, it's the holiday season, though, and having that soundtrack. And by the way, every time I call Doug Miller, he's got the same similar soundtrack. Although Dougie, little Dougie is, uh, you know, a little different, though, Doug, right? Yeah, we were at the aquarium today watching uh, Scuba Santa float around. Oh, that sounds awesome. That's right, hippos. Scuba Santa. Where was I? You know. <laughs> Hey, great! Said a bit around when I was a kid. <laughs> hey, uh, Me too. Half the stuff's I'm, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out an idea, and then uh, Morgan, I know you can take off if you want, but I'm of the opinion now 
that they weren't able to get anything done in this lame duck Congress. I think the Republicans now want to be the heroes to the cannabis community and figure out a way to make some money and introduce and lead the way as they take control of the House. And uh, even though they're not in control of the, the Senate, uh, they have their minority turtle in charge there that, um, you know, I call I mean, I call Mitch Yertle the turtle. I'm sorry. Honestly, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, despite uh, the, uh, you know, the really strong efforts uh, on the House side to uh, to pass legislation, I mean, you know, uh, approving the MORE Act, approving the Safe Banking Act for, again, like the seventh time, uh, you know, uh, the House has been doing everything that it possibly can to uh, move uh, legislation, and it's just continuously gotten caught up in the Senate. Um, you know, it, this is an issue that is the Republicans to steal. And if right. they are looking at the polling and looking at the uh, the course of history, they'll take it. I do. I get it. Hey, that soundtrack is what the holidays are all about, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. By the way, Morgan, what's her name? Her name's Rory McKenzie. Rory McKenzie. Hi. Hey, Merry Christmas, Rory McKenzie, to you and yours, okay? I know you're going to be a superstar because I know your dad. <laughs> oh, say so thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> hey, Morgan, really and truly, uh, thank you for your commitment to this show every third Friday. Uh, it means a lot to me. I've always enjoyed talking with you. And I look forward to more good news in 2023. And if you get a chance, go into that poll and then give us your top five stories in uh, cannabis. Trying to na nail down five of them is is not easy. And um, at least I don't think it is. I mean, uh, so I'm interested to hear what the what viewers have to say. Well, I mean, before I go, I mean, the year isn't over yet. The session isn't over yet. We still have an opportunity to get uh, this legislation into the omnibus. We still have the opportunity to get it into a standalone if the omnibus fails. So for all your viewers out there, put pressure on your lawmakers, in particular the Senate. This game is not over yet. You know, I know that everybody is kind of feeling a, a little bit down the dumps right now, but the game isn't over yet. And we should not give up until it is 100% done. All right. I love that. Uh, it makes me feel much better to hear that coming from you in Washington, D.C., uh, because I'm a, I'm forever an optimist in the in the future, and the fact that we're even talking openly about the cannabis business in the United States of America in the same year that the president actually mentioned the word marijuana for the first time in my life, I've never heard a president of the United States use the word. Forget about the political ploy for a second. He used the word. Well, the fact that cannabis policy reform is being used as a uh, a political bargaining tool by the uh, like the the ranking by the uh, uh, Senate Majority Leader is amazing. We've never seen that before. So, right. uh, you know, I think that that alone is something to celebrate. As, celebrate life. Celebrate your family now, Morgan. Will you please? It's four twenty on a Friday afternoon. I don't need to fill in the blanks for everybody. Everybody knows we take our break around this time and play Shanty by Jonathan Edwards because that's my version of the Waldos and 420 uh, when I was growing up. Uh, every time we heard the song Shanty, me and me and the boys used to step outside around the corner and out back. Uh, these days, maybe maybe we'll even have public consumption at some point legally somewhere, right? In 2023. That's the kind of predictions I'm looking for. All right, Morgan, uh, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year. And uh, we, we, Green Rush Live, will be back with more after we listen to my pal Jonathan Edwards sing that favorite song of mine. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.